Last time we went there, we knew where we were going, so we thought. And we went to where we were supposed to turn on this highway. We went, we looked for the landmark, we turned, we saw this, we saw the landmark, we turned. We weren't going by GPS, we weren't going by, uh, we were going by memory, and we were going by landmarks, and we drive past, well, now that's not it, and we drive. Well, maybe we're on the wrong road, and we turned, and we went down this road. Well, maybe we're on the wrong, and we kept looking, because somebody had moved the landmark, we had no idea where the guy's house was. Little did we know, it wasn't the landmark that had moved. He had sold that property, that, that house had been completely leveled, and there was a brand new, beautiful house that we didn't get to stay at. We stayed at a, a little house that was much farther away. Imagine walking out of your, we're going to find out, cave, walking out of your cave only to find the island that you used to use as a point of reference when you navigated is just not there, or it's been moved, or this mountain has been moved or been destroyed or something like this. I mean, if God were trying to get my attention, making the sun, the sky go, and having stuff hit the earth, and then all of a sudden, my favorite island, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not. Everything is going to be changed, which is going to rock people's world, which is actually what needs to happen for so many people. They're so secure in what they have and what they think they have, they don't take time to look for God. But God is going to shake all of that loose. And so, verse 15 says, We've had a new world order. We've had a world war. We've had worldwide famine. We've had worldwide disease. Okay, how about now if we change the contour of the world? Verse 15 says, Then the kings of the earth... And the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong and every slave and free man hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. So how many, who, how, what? So how many of y'all know that usually <clears throat> there's that group of people that they seem to escape from everything? <laughs> there's a war. Well, it doesn't really bother them because they, they get in their private jet and they just fly away. Well, there's there's... There's famine, but they, they have so much reserves that they, they're never going to get hungry. Well, there's sickness. Well, they, they have such good doctors that, okay. But this says kings, great men, commanders. So you have, you have the, the, the authority figures. You have the, the rich people. You have the rulers of armies, the rich people, the strong people. And you also have every slave, every free man, what are they going to do? They're going to hide themselves in caves and in the sides of the mountain because, and they said to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of their wrath has come and who is able to stand? Ain't nobody able to stand. Who is like our God? Nobody. Nobody. Who can stop our God? Nobody. When he's ready to come, he will come, and nothing will stop him from coming. And it will be a terrible day for those who are not in a right relationship, who are not at peace with him. We have friends. We have family. They're not at peace with God. We need to, we need to impress upon them, look, when he comes, if you're not his friend, it's bad. Well, I'll be able to hide from him. No, you won't. He just proved that because he makes islands disappear. He makes mountains disappear. He, he can take a beautiful piece of land and he can just make it go bloop because he's God. He's God and he can do all of these things. So, it's interesting though, um, they use this language. They ask the rocks and the mountains, fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lion. It's not what he says. From the wrath of the lamb. From the wrath of the lamb. Now, I've, the, you, you guys will appreciate this, ladies. You'll just go, you'll roll your eyes, and that's fine. So I'm thinking about that final shootout in The Pale Rider. And Clint Eastwood, he's walking down. 
He opens the gun. He puts the new cylinder full of bullets in there, and the main bad guy is down there, and he walks, and he's got his head down, and he walks, and he walks, and he gets about this far from him, and he looks up, and that guy goes, You! (laughs) And then, well, it's not a happy ending for that guy. They recognize this is the lamb. This is the lamb. They're not, they're not saying we've got to hide from God the Father, the Creator, the one who's wrathful. They are hiding from the lamb. He's the lion and he's the lamb. Sometimes we get so passionate about the love of Christ that we forget he is coming back as the King of kings, the Prince of peace, the Lord of lords, and he will carry a sword. And those who are not in a right relationship with him will fear him. Do you and I need to fear him now that we are in a right relationship with him? No. Well, we reverence him, yes. We did fear him before we knew him, but now that we know him, what is the first thing Jesus always, uh, God would always say when he would come on somebody? Fear not. Because they were afraid until God says, it's okay. And once God says, it's okay... And he says, we're okay. And why are we okay? We're okay because we've accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to get us in a right relationship with God. So there's another thought that comes to me about why are these people hiding in a cave? Joseph, uh, Joseph had a vision the other day. It wasn't a dream. Um, did you share? No. Um, about the same time that Emma and Julia were both having some, some pretty prophetic dreams, and that's part of the reason we're doing this Um, bonfire, campfire, uh, prayer meeting Wednesday at our house. Um, But that same day, Joseph Joseph called and he said, Mom, I had the weirdest vision. This was not a dream. This was an experience. And he was somewhere down in East Nashville. And um, Joseph Joseph does not lack for confidence when he walks around a place. I love that about him. You know, he's he's uh, he's convinced that we are of um, uh, Viking descent. If so, the shortest Viking known to man is standing right here. So, but he said, he said, as I'm walking through, I'm noticing these people are staring at me like, what are you doing here? And he said, it was everybody. And he said, they were all wearing either black or they were wearing red. And he said, I went into the coffee shop and I sat there and, and, and it said, literally, it was like everybody was just watching me. Like, who, why are you here? Who are you? There's something uncomfortably different about you. And he said, then he smelled and heard and felt the presence of this huge black war horse with the full leather gear that war horses would wear, literally breathing on him. And he was like, I, I, you know, I'm just I'm sitting there reading my Bible, praying. And several of us have gotten the confirmation that the, the war horse... He wasn't your enemy, he's your ally, and he's saying, dude, we're at war, and I just want you to know I'm right here with you. And then the young man that we were talking to about this, he said, I've been in that same area, and he goes, it's like all of those people are so lost, they're drawn to each other because they're all equally lost. They're hiding in a large group because they know that they're missing something. And when they see J- Joseph walk, walk through with Jesus inside of him, they recognize that person does not belong here. That person has an authority that I don't have. That person has, has a safety that I don't have. That person has a security that I don't have. So it's a respect and a fear and also a loathing. Because when you are good and they're not good, they're not going to like you because you're good and they're not good. And I don't mean good as in God is good. I mean, you're okay with God. You're, 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 you're purchased, you're bought. So I think that's why another reason they're drawn to these caves, because you know what? If I get in a cave, I can put a light over here and I can put a light over there and and the opening is over there. And so I can kind of control what comes and goes. And God's like, no, you can't. I'm actually inside the cave too. I'm in the earth. I can, come, I can come right through the wall if I want to come through the wall. There is no hiding from God. Oh, I'm just going to hide from God. I'm going to hide over here in my job. I'm going to, I'm going to hide in my life. I'm going to hide in this relationship. I'm going to hide in a bottle. I'm going to hide in this. I'm, God's like, you can't hide from me. Dude, 
I, you cannot hide from me. Chapter 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth or on the sea or any of the trees. And this is where the commentators say they believe that, that, that Jesus is giving John a little bit of break. Um, we, we've gone through, you know, we've gone through uh, uh, the, the six of the seals right now, and, and four of them have been, you know, troubling. Then there's one that was about the martyrs. Now this one that shows just literally the earth coming apart. And he, t- he takes a little break, and here's what he says. There are, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree. Now, I don't think that this means that, that, that it's a stagnant air. Uh, we, we were, uh, while we were traveling one time, I think we were pretty far west, and, it, and it, the, it was about 100 degrees, but there was this wind blowing that made it feel like you were in a convection oven. I mean, literally, it was just blow. It's like, oh, it's a breeze. It'll feel good. It did not feel good. It felt horrible. Where we live, an east wind, not a big deal. A west wind, not a big deal. You might get some rain in your windows. But if we get a southern wind, where we live up on the hill, we literally have had our garage door bend in from the, from the southward wind because it can be so strong up there. And then also on the north side, when it's a cold wind, it's extremely cold on the north end of the house. So I just think this is just, it's just kind of showing that the four corners of the earth, the earth's round, how do you have corners with something round? But you, it's, it's, it's speaking in a, in, in, in a, in a code here, but, but, but there are these four angels, and what they're doing is they're keeping the destructive force of nature that wants to turn on the earth, who created nature? Maybe it's just, you know what? You denied, you denied the creator. We're going to just wipe you out. I, I'm not exactly sure. But the word winds there is A-N-E-M-O-S, and it means violent wind. It doesn't just mean breeze. It means a violent wind. So these four angels are, are, are standing holding back the four winds of the earth so that no wind could blow on the earth or on the sea or any of the trees. Why? Because God, even in the midst of wrath, God is still merciful. Um, maybe he's just saving something for emphasis. I don't know. It's always like, you know, all the, all the plagues that hit the, the Egyptians. It's like, man, you know, <laughs> that's okay. I got this one cow. Oh, not today. That's okay. I got this... I got this one dog. Not today. You know, just boom, 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 boom. The four angels have the responsibility of protecting the earth from the potential damage that will be caused if the winds were let go. North, south, east, west, representing the types of winds, or maybe, maybe it's those different types of wind and, and, and tornadoes and all this other stuff. But verse 2 says, I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God, and he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or trees until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on their foreheads until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. So we have a fifth angel appear. He's giving a command um, or is repeating a command that he's been given not to bring harm on the earth, the sea, or the trees until the bondservants have been sealed. Now, I don't know. We know that the the, the mark of the beast, and and we hear a lot about that, but there's also a seal that goes on us. Um, You guys are all sealed as Christians. It's in here. It's called the Holy Spirit. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And again, speaking from a pre-trib thing, these are people who are going to come to know the Lord during the tribulation, which should be encouraging for those of you who have lost family. But they're going to be sealed across their forehead. Now, I don't know what that means or what what it's going to look like, but um, I have no problem believing it. So they're going to be uh, sealed. And then it goes on to say, I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. All right. 
there are people who say this isn't talking about children of Israel. This is talking about the, the, the church. 